Hey there, it's Jennifer from the blog, The Everyday Farmhouse. Today we're gonna to be taking cream from raw milk and we're going to make butter. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, to start, we're going to look at the milk. You can see where this, the cream is by the line where it's darker. What I find is that if you let the milk sit longer in the fridge, like maybe two days, three days, four days, the cream gets much thicker. It's easier to skim it off and to tell the difference between that and just the milk. And so I just take a measuring cup and I, if I know I'm making butter or something like that, I put my milk in these wider mouth jars and that makes it easier. Make sure you let everybody have a turn skimming the milk off. You don't want to <laughs> skimming the cream off. You don't want to leave anybody out here. So um, that's what I do. And I just put it all in a jar. Sometimes I do that throughout the week um, when I know I'm going to be making butter or sometimes I just wait and do it all at once. And then you turn your mixer on high. Okay, so at first this isn't going to look like much. It's just going to look like cream sloshing around in a bowl. And um, I started off without having my cover on the bowl and eventually you'll once it starts separating it's going to start sloshing all around and so you'll want to cover the bowl if you have a splash guard or something like that like I have here and even with that eventually I, I put a towel over it to kind of keep it from splashing out because it just is very easy to make a big mess but I do put my mixer on the highest setting possible and of course you don't have to use a mixer like this. You could use a blender, you could use a food processor, you could put it in a jar and shake it vigorously. Um, you don't have to do it this way. This is just the way I like to do it. I can do a large quantity at a time. So you're just going to be watching um, as this goes. You're going to watch it change. It's going to start off by looking like whipped cream. Um, that'll be the first noticeable change. It'll start to get foamy and then it'll start to get thick and it'll look like whipped cream. And once you get to that point, you're pretty close. There's not a whole lot of time between the whipped cream stage and the butter stage. Uh, you'll start to see it get chunky and begin to separate. Here, I'm just checking it to show um, that it's, it's pretty thick here. Uh, not yet fully making stiff peaks, but uh, definitely getting thicker. Okay, here you can see that it's very thick whipped cream. It's getting past that um, stage where you would use it for a pie or something. It's starting to get uh, kind of chunky and it's gonna start to separate. Okay, here you can see that it is starting to separate. It's getting more into chunks. It's past whipped cream but not quite yet to butter. Okay, now we're past the whipped cream stage and this is when you can really see that it's turning to butter. It's separating, there's a, you know, the milky liquid around it, which is the buttermilk, and then you're getting the butter solids in this. You're not quite there yet. I like to mix it a little bit more until it all kind of gathers on the whisk and then you know, okay, I'm, I'm done here. I'm ready to start rinsing this. Okay, so the first step is to take the cream or the butter out of the buttermilk and I put it into a pretty deep bowl. It's kind of easy when you're rinsing in the sink for it to get slip out of the bowl if it's not a deep bowl. A shallow bowl just does not work as well. 
and I like to save that first buttermilk um, to use for pancakes or whatever else you know you use buttermilk for in recipes my kids kind of like to drink it they read the little house books and so they want to taste the buttermilk afterward because that was a treat to Laura and Mary in their day so that's kind of fun to let them do that so after I get that separated then and it's okay to use your hands <laughs> it's your home so um, after you get that separated then we're gonna start um, kind of squeezing it to get the bulk of the buttermilk out and then we'll go to the sink and rinse it. This is next part is just a little bit tedious. Um, but what you're doing is you're rinsing all the buttermilk out of the butter. You are just doing this until the water pretty much runs clear. So you like to fill the bowl up and um, kind of squeeze the water out. You can use your hand, you can use a wooden spoon. Sometimes uh, if I have a bigger amount, I like to kind of spread it out on a, like a wooden board and rinse it that way. You just have to be so careful that it doesn't slide out of your bowl down the sink. I've had that happen. <laughs> I've put down the drain and that is so exasperating. So anyway, just be cautious and just keep working that with, uh, you know, a spoon or whatever and try to get all the buttermilk out of the butter. This helps the butter to last longer when you get all of that out and then it really does um, help to preserve the butter. Once you're satisfied that you have all the buttermilk rinsed out, you're going to salt this. You can use as much salt as you want. We you know, do it to taste. I take a nice pinch. I would say it's possibly about a quarter of a teaspoon. And then you're just going to use your spoon and mix that into the butter. This adds another layer of preservation and of course flavor to your butter. And then I had soap molds on hand. That's what I typically use. I know that each little bar of soap is about the equivalent of a stick of butter. Uh, eventually I might buy something a little bit better suited to butter, but this is what I use for now. And I just scoop it into the molds and stick that in the fridge. And then I could pop that out and put it in our butter dish. Once you've got it in the molds, you're done. You have made your own butter from raw milk. I hope you give this a try and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.